Hey, let's talk about obtaining a proper 12 lead EKG. This applies to both EMS, emergency medical services, and in a hospital setting. First, we need to remove the patient's clothing from the waist up because to do a good 12 lead, leaving them in street clothes is a problem for various reasons. Lifting up shirts or bras or uh, regardless of the type of clothing they have on, it's just going to interfere with the wires and potentially cause movement. And this will all cause artifact on a 12 lead and make it much harder to read. And obtaining a good 12 lead is paramount since we're looking for sometimes just one to two block of ST segment depression or elevation looking closely at these leads. And a 12 lead is much more sensitive than a regular monitor. And uh, we have to have good prep. And by removing the patient's clothing and placing the patient into a hospital gown, it prevents the wire tangle that is commonly associated with a 12 lead EKG. It also permits a full chest exam. After all, it's easier to see chest rise, chest symmetry, and listen to lung sounds when a patient's naked from the waist up and placed in a hospital gown. And it also allows for rapid defibrillation, realizing that for every minute we delay defibrillation, they lose a tenth of a percentile in resuscitation via defibrillation. It's also going to save time in the emergency room. Obviously, use a hospital-type gown. I recommend for my fellow EMS providers, simply put a hospital gown in your first in bag or in your ambulance so that you can properly do a 12 lead. Your ER nurses will love you, and it's not just pandering to the ER, it's just good medicine. For my ER staff, if you have a patient who you suspect is having acute coronary syndromes or for whatever various reasons is receiving a 12 lead, placing them in a hospital gown is just a prudent thing to do. As an ERRN in a large tertiary level 1 trauma center who receives plenty of cardiac patients and other sick patients, I'm amazed at how many patients that are transferred in by helicopter or critical care ambulance that still have their street clothes on. This really is inexcusable. Yes, I understand that we can use scissors to rapidly remove clothing, but it's much easier to have the patient prepared to possibly receive life-sustaining measures, including rapid defibrillation, pacing, or CPR should they deteriorate. And since we're doing a 12 the EKG, that risk has just increased. Next, we want to palpate where we're going to place our leads. It's not visualization. It's always palpating intercostal muscles. Muscles. The majority of 12 the EKG texts will mandate that you must be within a half an intercostal space off in your chest lead placement or your 12 lead will be off. After all, these leads, or precordial leads, are little positive electrodes or camera angles that look specifically at the heart. And if we're off by several inches because we're not palpating in our costals, it'll throw off what that 12 lead looks like and how it's interpreted. interpreted. Next thing you want to do is remove chest hair. Chest hair, regardless of how thick it is, makes that electrode placement less effective. And if there's hair under that lead, it will cause artifact, which will just ruin and negate how that 12 lead can be read or how effectively it is read. Now, the 3M clippers that I'll show you in the next slide actually clip the hair and don't produce micro abrasions that a razor would. And if you have someone with a hairy chest, a razor will clog up quite fastly. Whereas the disposable head of the 3M blade cuts a lot of hair before it becomes clogged. It's faster, it's more comfortable, and it prevents infection should the patient have to go for open heart if they need a cabbage. And it's safer. Like I said, there's less nicks and cuts that could potentially cause infection. Here's a picture of that disposable 3M razor. The purple head is disposable. The power unit, which is above, which turns on and off, is reused. These work fairly nice, and they're not that expensive. And if you're doing 12 leads, whether you're EMS or hospital, this should be included with your first in monitor that's a 12 lead monitor or with your 12 lead EKG equipment in a hospital. Next we need to prep the skin. Well remember we're trying to get good contact with that electrode and the way we're able to get good contact is to remove the oil that's found on the skin and or diaphoresis. We can do this by using a alcohol prep in that area that we've just clipped and there are commercially available skin preps. Remember the 12 lead is more sensitive to artifact than a regular lead 2 monitoring and any oil, diaphoresis, or hair left on the skin 
will cause that artifact that will preclude reading that 12 lead. We also will use a piece of 3M sandpaper, which was pictured in the next slide, or simply a 2x2 or a 4x4 to abrade the skin slightly after we've taken the oil off with an alcohol wipe. We want to be able to patient the patient correctly. Now, if the patient's short of breath and unable to tolerate laying flat, there's not much you can do about that. But you want to get the patient to keep their head back versus resting forward. Because if they're looking down at what you're doing during the 12 lead, they're going to be using these sternocleidomastoid muscles, which will give off artifact, because after all, the 12 leads picking up electrical activity in the muscles of the chest, and any motions in the neck by the patient looking forward or holding their head up off the bed, off the pillow, will cause interference. Here's a picture of the sandpaper roll by 3M. And if you don't have these, don't worry. A 2x2 or a 4x4 will work just fine. Next is our lead placement. Remember, left lead, left arm, right lead, right arm, left leg, right leg, are just that. They should be placed on the wrists or on the ankles, or at least somewhere on the limbs, because they are called limb leads. The precordial leads, or chest leads, are as pictured in the diagram. They need to be on the intercostal spaces and off no more by a half an intercostal space. I simply look for the landmarks as noted in the slide. I start with V1 and V2. I palpate down to the fourth intercostal space and place V1 and V2 in the fourth intercostal space, space right next to the sternum. Then I find the midclavicular line, palpate to the fifth intercostal space and place my V4. Then V3 is just splitting the difference between V2 and V4. I next come over to the mid axillary line level with V4 to place V6. Then I place V5 between V4 and V6 since I have palpated and directly placed those leads. Posterior leads of V7, 8, and 9 are used to view the posterior wall of the left ventricle. Someone who's having back pain or suspected to have having a posterior wall MI will have these leads placed. The right ventricular leads are V3R through V6R, and these are just mirrors of the left sided EKG. Remember whether you're doing a posterior 12 lead EKG or a right sided EKG, you need to cross out what leads you've moved and write which ones they are so that the reader and the medical record has a clear indication of what kind of EKG this is.